special meeting. I wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone present. The Duval County School Board is here to set policy for the district that will improve student achievement and address other business items that require a vote of the board. The management and day-to-day -day operations of the district are the responsibility of the superintendent. It is not the role of the board to make managerial or operational decisions. The board has policies and procedures in place to assist the superintendent in resolving management and operational issues. As a show of good courtesy and respect to each other, we ask that all mobile phones be turned off and that there be no flash photography during this meeting. For those wishing to address the board during the comments from the audience portion of the board meeting, please note that we only accept the speaker cards until 5.05 p.m. Thank you for taking the time to join us and for all the interest in the operation of the Duval County School District. Approval of the July 23, 2019 agenda that the Duval County School Board approved the 23, 2019 agenda as submitted on July 18, 2019 with the following changes. Authorized advertisement of 2019-2020 proposed millage levy and proposed tentative budget item revised attachments amended. Is there a motion? I move. Second. It was moved by Board Member Grimes and seconded by Vice Chair Jones. Are there any questions, any comments? Seeing none, I call for your vote. Madam Chair. I know, I just, just joined the meeting. <laughs> She's joining. <laughs> Did everybody else vote but me? Oh, okay, here it is. Do we have the votes Is it coming? Yeah. Madam Chair, the action passed 6 0. We are now on the public comment portion of our agenda. Those wishing to address the board must fill out a blue speaker card. The school board welcomes your comments on matters that are before the board for consideration. It is not the board's intent to respond, but to use the input in our deliberations. To give everyone appropriate respect and courtesy, please refrain from audible comments or applause. When you're called upon, please state your name for the record. Please limit your comments to three minutes. You will be notified when 30 seconds remained and also when your time is up. If your concerns can exceed that time, you may present written comments to the board. You're asked to refrain from references to specific individuals. We have a couple of speaker cards. The first speaker card is Darlene Miller, followed by Terry Borg. Good evening. First, I would like to start by thanking you for the last vote and the previous being right before this. Because if the children aren't worth it, what else is? This is all about them, and they deserve this, and they need this. So I'd like to thank you for making a stand and taking on the politicians that keep changing the rules on you every other day. Secondly, my husband sends his apologies. He couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> but other than that, um, we just like to see you keep going. Just don't give up the fight. Keep going for the children and whatever it takes. If you need to raise property taxes, raise the property taxes. If you need to raise, add the sales tax, add the sales tax. You see a lot of people that comment a lot of times on the articles on Facebook or the articles on the media. That's not how the general opinion of the people. The general opinion of the people are the children are worth the taxes. 
the general opinion or for you? I would just like to say that, and I would just like to say thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Terry Bork. Hello, my name is Terry Bork. I'm a local attorney in Jacksonville, Florida. I've just read their memorandum. I just have a few comments for the board. One thing the memorandum says is that uh, while the general counsel is the chief general counsel, he can appoint assistant general counsel to assist just the school board. Uh, but remember, there's an inherent conflict of interest there. Any general counsel they've had that's been assisting you answers to the general counsel. They can be fired by the general counsel. They can have their salary reduced by the general counsel. It's just an inherent conflict of interest. No matter how well you try to you know, do away with the conflict, it's there. Uh, the uh, next thing I would note is uh, there's discussion of an attorney general opinion. And just beware of that. Number one, the attorney general opinion is just advisory, so you can wait a long process to get an opinion, and then you'll be right back to square one, deciding if you have to go to court to challenge it, if, particularly if the city says, well, we're not going to buy by that opinion. Secondly, that can be very political. As you know now, uh, the Republican Party is very much intertwined with the push for charter schools, and you have a Republican governor, uh, I mean, Republican Mayor Curry, who is very involved in Republican Party politics, and you have a Republican attorney general, and that can really give you a different type of uh, result than you might be expecting. Uh, the next thing is, uh, I would think that, uh, in my opinion, a suit should be filed as soon as possible because you have a limited opportunity to try to get this on the November 2019 ballot, and you need to do that for the kids. I would take the position that you don't have to get any approval from uh, the general counsel to do that. You have the authority under the Florida Constitution to supervise, operate, maintain the schools. You have authority under the Florida statutes to sue. And of course, that's an inherent authority of supervising, maintaining, controlling schools. Because you can't do that if you can't sue to enforce your power. He can't stop you from, act, from your, fulfilling your constitutional duties. And this was done in another action involving the Jacksonville Police and Fire Fund. Bill Shepard filed a lawsuit, and I believe that uh, uh, the arguments they were making uh, weren't working as much. And then I just want to uh, uh, very much add that uh, there's a lawsuit in Clay County that's been followed. Follow that lawsuit very closely. They're trying to move for a quick decision in that lawsuit, and if they get a favorable decision, then the clause that uh, Chairman Hershey read about there's another opinion out there from a competent court of jurisdiction that is contrary to what the general counsel says, that opinion would govern and that opinion would help you significantly uh, in this case. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now to the discussion again in the agenda. Administrative, administration and business services, budget and financial, uh, authorized advertisement of 2019-2020 proposed millage levy and proposed tentative uh, budget. Uh, Dr. Green, I'm so glad you get to read this recommendation. Thank you. <laughs> A, that the Duval County School Board accept advertisement for the proposed 2019-2020 tentative budget and proposed levies as follows. Required local effort including prior period adjust funding adjustment, tentative millage levy, 3.9020. Proposed amount to be raised, $280,296,215. Funding, uh, excuse me, capital outlay, 1.5 mills, tentative millage levy. Proposed amount to be raised, $107,750,980. Discretionary operating, tentative millage levy, 0.7480. Proposed amount to be raised, $53,731,821. Totals proposed, tentative millage levied, 6.1500. Proposed amount to be raised, $441,779,016. The total millage rate to be levied is more than the rollback rate by 4.14%. B, 
that the Duval County School Board authorize publication of legal notices and advertisement of a public hearing to be held on July 23rd, 2019 at 5.05 p.m. on the proposed millage rate and the tentative budget in accordance with sections 200.065 paren 2, paren 3, paren 10, 1011.71, 1011.03 Florida statutes. The notices and advertisements will appear in the Florida Times Union on Saturday, July 27th, 2019. Is there a motion? Move approved. So moved. Oh. It was moved by uh, Vice Chair Jones and seconded by Board Member Willie. Is there any discussion or comments? I just have one question to the Chair to Dr. Green. The required local effort of 3.9020, how does that compare with the last year's millage? To the chair, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Bagley to, uh, last year, I think that was my first day on the job, so I'm not <laughs> sure I would remember. I don't remember. Just about you. <laughs> first one. No, just the first one. I think it was. Ms. Bagley. Through the chair to board member Jones, last year's required local effort was 4.045. 4 0.045, which is um, the difference between this year and last year's um, rate is 0 0.1430. Do you have, through the chair, do you have the dollar amount? What does that equate to? The full point. 0 0.045 millage rate last year. And I'll just say for the record, uh, the city of Jacksonville, without raising taxes, generated $50 million of new revenue over what they had last year. And because of the required local effort, we are reducing our millage rate, which means how can growth actually pay for itself when we can't even capture the growth or increase value in the property values in Duval County? Uh, we, we are generating fewer dollars with the required local effort than we did last year. And that's been going on for several years and that's an unfortunate reality. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Jones. Any further comments? Seeing none, I call for your vote. By your actions, you've passed the 6 0. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? We will adjourn. Second. It's moved by Vice Chair Jones and seconded by Board Member Grimes. All in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.